Good evening. Welcome to Moments with Mary. On this day, April 12, 2021, it is indeed a magnificent Monday. I want to offer a thank you to all persons working to take care of us during these pandemic times. We must continue to take care of ourselves by masking, washing our hands often, and warding off crowds. April is National Poetry Month. Today, I will spotlight Paul Lawrence Dunbar by sharing a bit of his biography and two of his poems. Paul Lawrence Dunbar was born in Dayton, Ohio, June 27, 1872, to parents Joshua Dunbar and Matilda Murphy Dunbar. Both parents were slaves prior to the Civil War. The relationship between Matilda and her son was a strong one. She recognized that Paul displayed an early talent with words. Matilda worked to ensure he received the best education possible. He attended the 10th Street Elementary School in Dayton, Ohio, and Central High School with Orville Wright. During high school, Paul wrote and published poems in his school newspaper, serving as editor and was an active member in the literary and debate societies. His poetry was also published in the local Dayton Herald, and Dunbar edited a new short-lived African-American paper, The Tatler. Paul Lawrence Dunbar continued to write and publish many works worldwide. Although 33, when he died on February the 9th, 1906, his legacy, most notably, his dialect poetry influenced many writers of the Harlem Renaissance. And that's just a bit about Paul Lawrence Dunbar. So I encourage you to read more about him. And now I'll share two of his poems. The first one is entitled, The Corn Stalk Fiddle. When the corn's all cut and the bright stalks shine like the burnished spears of a field of gold. When the field mice rich on the nubbins dine, and the frost comes white, and the wind blows cold. Then it's high old fellows, and high diddle diddle, for the time is right for the corn stalk fiddle. And you take a stalk that is straight and long, with an expert eye to its worthy points. And you think of the bubbling strains of song that are bound between its pithy joints. Then you cut out strings with a bridge in the middle with a cornstalk bow for a cornstalk fiddle. Then the strands that grow as you draw the bow over the yielding strings with a practice hand. 
and the music flow, never loud but low, is the correct note of a fairy band. Oh, your dainty songs are a misty riddle to the simplest sweets of the cornstalk fiddle. When the eve comes on and our work is done and the sun drops down with a tender glance, with their hearts all prime for the harmless fun, come the neighbor's girls for the evening's dance. And they wait for the well-known twist and twiddle. More time, more than time from the cornstalk fiddle. Then Brother Jabez takes the bow while Ned stands off with Susan Bland. Then Henry stops by Millie Snow and John takes Nellie Jones' hand while I pair off with Mandy Biddle and scrape, scrape, Scrape goes the cornstalk fiddle. Salute your partners, comes the call, and join hands and circle round. Grand train back and balance all. Four steps lightly spurn the ground. Take your lady and balance down the middle to the merry strains of the cornstalk fiddle. So the night goes on and the dance is over and the merry girls are homeward gone. But I see it all in my sleep once more and I dream till the very break of dawn of an impish dance on a red hot griddle to the screech and scrape of a cornstalk fiddle. And that's the cornstalk fiddle by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And the second poem is We Wear the Mask. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guilt. With torn and bleeding hearts we smile and mouth with mirrored subtleties. Why should the world be over wise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but, O oh great Christ, our cries, to thee from tortured soul arise. We sing, but, O oh, the clay is vile beneath our field, feet and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. And that's We Wear the Mask, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, 1896. But I continue, encourage you to read more about Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Thank you for listening and watching. Continue to mask and bowl your eyes. I love you and we'll see you next week. Let's take care of each other because we are all in this together. Goodbye.